What's up guys? Welcome back to Aquatic Elements. Today is my last day in Thailand. Now I'm flying tomorrow morning, so I thought I would just make a roundup video of the entire trip. Now I've bought some things in Thailand and I am left with obviously so many unforgettable moments and unforgettable experiences. And I just wanna give a huge thank out to Jimmy Goldfish. Now, without Jimmy, I don't think any of this would have been possible. He helped organize all of the tours to the different farms. He helped organize all of the hotels. Our driver, we had such a nice car to drive around in and we stayed in some very nice hotels as well. So I just wanna say a big shout out to Jimmy Goldfish. If you can and if you are in the USA or Canada, please support him and potentially just buy some fish from him. I'm going to put a link to his website down below, but he is an absolutely amazing guy and I can't thank him enough because none of this would be possible without him. So make sure you check out the fish that he has. And I think by the time this video is out, all of the fish that he actually purchased in Thailand, and I think he purchased a couple hundred fish maybe, maybe even more. They should all be on his website by now, so please go and check that out. But enough about that, let's get back on track and basically what have we done in the Thailand trip. Now we visited quite a lot of different goldfish farms. There were quite a few that we didn't get to see, but hopefully we'll have a trip in the future where we can do that. We visited lots of different farms like Meng, Nana, Chonko, BK, um, I think there was a, there was quite a few more Shogun and there was a couple others we visited as well. I had the opportunity obviously to visit the Chukka Chuck Market which you would have seen if you watched those videos as well and we visited some different goldfish stores and different fish shops as well so it's been an absolutely amazing time. You can see we've got the Bangkok City backdrop behind me in the hotel. But I've had an absolutely amazing experience. It's amazing to see the different farm setups, the different layouts that they all have and just the way they do things. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about a few key facts and key bits of information that I've actually learned about talking to the breeders. And I don't wanna forget it. I wanna make sure it's documented on video, but I did have the chance to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with quite a few of the breeders and some in-depth in-depth chats with them, especially at the golfer show we had in Bangkok as well. So a few takeaway key bits of information that I would say and that have really stuck with me, I'm gonna tell you guys at home now. Now, firstly, one of the ones was keeping fish in shallow water. All of the farms kept their fish in water under 15 inches. And the majority of farms kept them between about 10 and 12 inches of water depth. Now this is really, really interesting and it seemed to me that a lot of the problems dissipated or disappeared from the goldfish when they were kept at these shallow water depths and I hardly saw any fish with buoyancy problems, even the number of fish there were at the farms. Obviously they're constantly looking at them and treating them etc. But it was very interesting to see that the recommended water depth I would say is around 12 inches. Another thing the majority of the farms recommended was keeping their fish at between 28 and 30 degrees centigrade which seems absolutely mental but a lot of them said if you're dropping them below about 26 degrees you might end up with problems with the fish so it's very interesting to see that they really advocate for that warmer water they also did say that the lifespan does become shorter which ties into the next point now, I asked a few of the breeders what they thought the average lifespan is for these very high quality fancy goldfish. Not your standard goldfish, your standard long body fish, but the high quality, short, compacted, round fancy goldfish, which are the new sort of trending fish. And this shocked me a little bit. Now, I don't know if you guys can put any guesses down below what you think the average lifespan should be for a fancy goldfish, for a high quality, new style fancy goldfish. But the breeders said that they should only live around two years, which really blew me away and really gave me second thoughts on keeping fancy goldfish. I was really shocked and I said, you don't think they can live longer than two years? And they said, you might get some that live to three years, but you'll be quite lucky. And I thought that was such a shame. 
and it really sort of stuck with me that these fish only should live for a couple of years according to the breeders. They said if you want to keep the fish longer term then keep them at slightly lower temperature and really really reduce the feed. They said the fish will get very skinny but only feed them a couple times a week which I thought was crazy but they said if you want to keep these fish longer term you need to reduce the amount of food that you're feeding them and really just feeding them live foods like daphnia, bloodworm and brine shrimp really helps to pro prolong their life rather than the pellets or the steamed eggs. Now they said if you are feeding steamed eggs this helps get the body shape, this helps really fatten the fish out but they try to wean the fish off this as they get older because they don't want the fish to get even fatter than they are because it can lead to buoyancy issues and also swimming issues where they just can't swim pro properly. So they use this egg to really broaden the bodies out and they use the pellets to put the growth on. So that was another interesting fact that I learned from the breeders. And they also said if you're keeping these fish in aquariums do smaller water changes more often they were saying do water changes once every couple weeks, which I thought was quite crazy. But they said that because the quality of water in where we live in the cities can be quite bad, doing large water changes can really shock the fish. So they really just recommended doing smaller water changes more often, which was very, very interesting as well. Now, going back onto the food, the subject of food. I wanted to talk about what these breeders actually do to get their fish so big so quickly. We're just going to go over that. And they said when these fish hatch from eggs, they start to feed them on brine shrimp nauplii in style 1, which is the smallest brine shrimp you can get. As soon as the brine shrimp have hatched, that's what they feed them. Then after that, they move on to larger brine shrimp and also daphnia, which they get from... I think they get from local shops or they actually get it delivered to farms in bags and they said that these are all collected from pig farms they've got like big ponds or lakes at the pig farms and because the nutrients are so high running off into the water they get really big algae blooms and the daphne grows like crazy so they actually get these delivered to the farm and they said they also feed that with steamed egg however they also put something into the steamed egg which i didn't realize and which is why the steamed egg was so orange in colour, and that is astaxanthin powder. Now, this is a carotenoid found in shrimp, found in like arctic krill that they remove from the shrimp. I believe they obviously grind them up, and then they get this powder which they add to the steamed egg, and they cook the steamed egg in these huge cookers, and then they feed that to the fish along with the live foods. And then they slowly wean the fish off this steamed egg. I believe it was after about two to three months and they start feeding pellets and then they increase the pellets and also I think they feed only the live foods to the younger fish. They sort of wean them off and they get these fish to five or six inches within about eight months. So the fish generally get to about four inches by six months and they start to sell them generally once they're a lot larger there was only a few farms selling smaller fish so it was very interesting to see they grow them on as quickly as possible because they need obviously the money to get for the fish so they were the sort of key facts that have really stuck with me and i really wanted to convey to you guys at home from the breeders themselves because it's not often you actually get to speak to these breeders now in the second part of this video i want to talk about a few things that i've actually collected and a few gifts that i've actually collected along this tour in thailand so the first one was this koi which i thought was really cool so i actually found this at the chuck chuck market i couldn't find any goldfish sort of ornaments like this and you can see that this was a hundred baht so this was just over two pounds which i thought was really cheap and really really like it so really nice souvenir so that's what i got first then also at the chuck chuck market i did find this tiny little goldfish oh, i don't know if the camera will focus so this tiny little goldfish ornament i thought i could put on my fish tank and that was 15 bucks so i think that was about 30p and then i also which i've seen actually online is one of these really funny cats that actually fish in the tanks so you can actually sit this on the side of your tank like this and actually have this thread dangling in the water as if the cat is fishing for your fish so i thought this was really cool and i had to pick it up i think this was 
40 baht or 50 baht I think so he was about one pound so I picked him up thought he was really really funny next up from 59 stingray farm I got this stingray which is actually made to look exactly like one of his stingrays so this is actually a keychain which I thought was really cool and he actually gifted this to me so I'm really really pleased with that it's made of it's made of like a leather so that's really cool Next up, obviously I met Jimmy Goldfish, so he did give me a few t-shirts, which you probably would have seen me wearing in some of the vlogs. So very thankful for the t-shirts, Jimmy. Really appreciate it. Now, I don't think he's selling those t-shirts, but I think he mentioned that he might sell them in the future. So if you want those, you can check out his website or ask, them, ask him for that. And then we got some Kenta fish food. So I actually got gifted this by the doctor, Dr. Charat, I think his name is, who actually designed this and I managed to have a good good one-on-one -on -one conversation with him about this gas release formula. And it was really, really interesting. He's actually got so much experience with fish and I would have loved to do a video where I could interview him one-on-one -on -one like this, but unfortunately he was really, really busy. But he's actually developing, been developing this for years and years and he's been a fish doctor for decades. So, it was really, really interesting and speaking to him and actually using this food, I know loads of people that have used this in the past, it does seem to work. So that was really interesting. And obviously this is the brand new packaging, the 500 gram bag. So if you want to get hold of this, you can get in contact with Jimmy Goldfish who will be selling this. And this is the brand new packaging for the big bags, which you can get because obviously the other pots were a lot smaller. So if you've got lots of fish, they're not ideal for that. But I think I might do a video just on the Kenta food and speaking a little bit more about what the doctor actually told me. Next up, I got these two nets. I always like buying nets and different things from some of the markets. Now, I was a bit stupid buying these because they don't actually fit in my suitcase, so I'm gonna have to try and bend them and squish them down and then reopen them <laughs> when I get back to the UK. But I mean, if they break, it doesn't really matter. I think I paid 210 or 220 baht for both of these, which is about four pounds, three pounds 70 for both of these nets. Thought they'd be quite good for the monster fish tank because they'll reach the bottom and they're pretty big. So pick those up. And then last but not least, and this was my favorite purchase actually, I purchased this. Now for those of you who don't know what this is, I've seen loads of the market stalls using these to do their water changes. And I paid 120 baht for this. Actually, I think I paid 110 because I didn't quite have the right change and they did it for 110. But this is to do water changes and to fill your tank back up with. So this was about £2.50. It goes into your tank like this and you can put a hose on this end and you've got a ball valve here. So you put a hose on this end, you can siphon water out of your tank without sucking your fish out. So your goldfish or your fish that you've got in your tank aren't going to get sucked onto the bottom of this and you're not going to damage them or anything like that. And then, oh, this actually unscrews as well, which I didn't realize. So you've got that, which siphons out. And then when I fill my tank back up, I can put this in the tank and this diffuses all of the water out of the tank. So it's not blasting all the sand out of the way. And it's not gonna, none of the fish can swim into the pipe or anything like that. And it's gonna sit in the tank. It's not gonna fall out or anything like that, which is super, super handy. So I'm so glad I picked this up because it's actually gonna make water changes very, very easy. But that is it for today's video. I'm heading back to the airport in the hours of tomorrow morning. And I thought I'd just make this roundup trip. I hope you guys have enjoyed every single episode of the Thailand trip. If you haven't, make sure to go and check out the Tank Tours playlist where we've got all of the different videos I made on this Thailand trip. But that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping.